More than 35 years ago, Professor Twardowski discovered that repeated cannulation of the exact same puncture sites was an effective puncture technique in patients with an arteriovenous fistula. This method of constant site puncturing was later termed the buttonhole technique. Here one can clearly see that this patient, who has been on dialysis for several years, has only two puncture sites, one arterial and one venous. The goal of this video is to familiarize practitioners with the technique and to demonstrate the four different steps required for a successful result. The first step involves carefully choosing both the arterial and venous cannulation sites. The procedure starts with evaluation of the fistula. We have to check through observation for evidence of inflammation surrounding the fistula, edema or swelling, drainage, pain and signs of aneurysm. Through palpation for the presence of blood flow through the access and through auscultation for any sound and the direction of flow. We will subsequently look for healthy and, if possible, straight areas which are easy to cannulate. A distance of 6 to 8 centimetres should be respected between the two cannulation sites. Wash and preferably scrub the cannulation sites with soap, then rinse and dry. Thoroughly disinfect the cannulation sites, respecting the contact time of the antiseptic agent. The second step of the technique involves making the very first puncture or cannulation. Start by thoroughly disinfecting the cannulation area. Apply a tourniquet and palpate the vessel to be cannulated. Redisinfect the cannulation sites. Cannulation is performed with a normal sharp fistula needle at an angle depending on the depth and anatomy of the fistula and thus varies with each patient. Tape the needle and check for any flashback of blood. It is essential that cannulation site selection and the first cannulation be performed by experienced practitioners as the success of the technique depends on it. After the first session, needle removal should be performed at the same angle as the insertion angle. Apply pressure to the site when the needle is removed entirely. When hemostasis is achieved, disinfect the cannulation site thoroughly and gently slide the biohole plug, a thumbtack-shaped plastic peg or pin, toward the vessel, along the same path as the puncture needle that has just been removed. Keep the peg in place with sterile tweezers while the holder or support unit is being removed. A compressive dressing covers the plug. The plug will not be removed until the next session. The biohole plug facilitates creation of a scar tissue tunnel track and allows easy recannulation respecting the same insertion angle. As you will see, a biohole plug will be systematically used until at least the sixth dialysis session. Showering is permitted with the scar tissue tunnel track and biohole plug as long as a plasticized hermetically sealed dressing is used to protect the puncture sites. The third step of the puncture technique involves creation of the tunnel track. The procedure will be performed from the second session onwards until at least the sixth. Longer utilization of the biohole plug may be necessary in some patients. First, remove the dressing. Gently disinfect the skin around the biohole plug and the cannulation site. Using a gauze swab or sterile tweezers, carefully remove the biohole plug. It is important to re-disinfect the puncture site at this stage. Keep the skin taut without pulling while carefully sliding a sharp needle through the track left open by the biohole plug. 
preferably holding it by the tube. It is important to insert the needle into the exact same spot as the first cannulation, remembering that the angle of insertion must be the same to continue creation of the scar tissue tunnel track. Always secure the needle. At the end of dialysis, remove the needle at the same angle as the angle of insertion. Apply pressure to the site when the needle is removed entirely. When hemostasis is achieved, disinfect the cannulation site thoroughly and gently slide the biohole plug toward the vessel along the tunnel track. A compressive dressing covers the plug. The plug will not be removed until the next session. From the seventh session onwards, the routine buttonhole puncture technique may be implemented. Wash and preferably scrub the cannulation sites with soap, then rinse and dry. After the first disinfection of the skin, any scabs over the cannulation sites need to be removed using the scab remover. Removing the scabs completely is essential in order to visualise the tunnel entrance and avoid infection. The previous scrubbing procedure will facilitate this process. The second disinfection of the puncture sites must now be done. Slide the biohole needle gently into the established tunnel track, preferably holding the needle by the tube. Widening of the puncture site can be prevented by leaving a small space between the hub of the needle and the puncture site. Tape the needle and check for any flashback of blood. If moderate resistance is met, pull back the needle a few millimetres, rotate it gently while pushing it forward using some light pressure. If unsuccessful, withdraw the needle re-disinfect and reinsert a new biohole needle into the same track. Please note that in some rare cases it may not be possible to insert a biohole needle. As a final resort, a sharp needle may be used with extreme caution since it seriously increases the risk of infection. Remove the needle at the same angle as the angle of insertion. Apply pressure to the site when the needle is removed entirely. Continue by disinfecting the cannulation site and finally cover with a dressing. Some guidelines suggest that topical antimicrobial prophylaxis may be applied to the buttonhole sites after dialysis. Mm -hmm.